Hi, I'm Jenna, and this is episode 67. I don't know, 67 seems like a big number. So, a big hello um, to all the new viewers and to those that keep returning. So, oh, I feel like I had a busy week. So, hopefully, it was really sunny and I have the windows open because it's ridiculously hot and humid today. My frizzy hair probably is a good indicator of that. But all of a sudden it just got dark and it might start raining. So if it starts thunderstorming, which we're supposed to get, I'll close the window. But, oh, the breeze feels so nice. Um, let's see. Lots to talk about today. First I want to talk about, because I don't want to forget it, is this weekend, Memorial Day weekend. For those of you who watch before the weekend, um, is the Great Lakes Fiber Festival in Worcester, Ohio. And I'm excited. I'm planning on being there Saturday morning, hopefully, if all goes well. And, um, yeah. So if you happen to see me out and about, please feel free to come up and say hi. Um, I'm really excited about going. Last year was my first year going, and it was a lot of fun. I got to see a lot of people. I met up with some people. And it just was really, really fun. I thought there was a lot of variety um, lots of fiber, lots of yarn, lots of accessories, and and I just, I really enjoyed it. So this year I'm going again, and I have to be super, super good. There are a couple things that I'm going to be specifically looking for, and it's so hard because, you know, you see all these independent people, and you want to buy from, like, every single person. And there's so much beautiful, beautiful stuff, but I, I know what I'm, what I'm going for. So hopefully I'll try to get some pictures. Last year, I I think I had my camera on me, but I was so just like overwhelmed just with everything. I mean, I think I walked through three times at least to really take it all in, and it was awesome. <laughs> it was really, really great. So if you've never gone, I really recommend going. It's a lot of fun. It's not like totally huge. You can, I mean, I wasn't there more than a couple hours, but it's fun, and I think it's family friendly, although, I don't know if I'll be going solo, but lots of stuff, lots of stuff to see, animals, and everything. It's just really, really a great time. So, uh, quick reminders, um, we have two knit-alongs going on. The first one is Sam the Super Frog. <laughs> I love playing with toys. Um, you have nine days from today. So I'm closing it out the last day of June. I will um, lock the thread at midnight or the next morning if I can stay up that late. I think it's a third, no, Friday? The last day of June is Friday? I think that's right. Or May. Last day of May is Friday. Anyway, something like that. <laughs> um, so you have until then. So that's only nine days. There's only two entries. What's up, people? Get your get your frogs in. You want your chance to win the fabulous prizes because the fabulous prizes include a skein, a beautiful skein of green and the colorway called Kermit. From Sun Valley Fibers, it is 80% merino, 20% nylon. It's a sock yarn, fingering weight, 400 yards. It is gorgeous, and it was generously donated from Jeanette, who is the dyer behind Sun Valley Fibers. And it is so soft. It is such a nice base. I think it looks like that has a good twist, and it looks like it'll wear really well and be really soft at the same time. So, she was very generous to donate this and two skeins of her MCN um, to the last knit along. So, super awesome. Thank you again, Jeanette. Which I was all like, ooh, I can't wait to try her MCN. And someone had told me, oh, if you like MCN, you should really try her MCS, which I think is Merino Cashmere Silk. I've heard that's to die, to die for, so... Like, mm-hmm, might have to check out some of that. And then, the other prize is a fabulous bag from Lois, who is Knitting's My Bag. And it is the size small. There's nothing small about this. There really, it is 
Her bags are amazing. They're huge in size. Love her bags. Adore Lois. Sweetest person. And it is the Lorex. And then there's the Meads being knit. Super cute. Perfect to put your knitted toys in or any other project. I just happen to be partial to toys. And then our other knit along, which is May and June, it's part of our Technique knit along series, and that is felting. So um, I'm supposed to have a skinny yarn coming for that. And then the second prize is another Knittings My Bag bag, donated by me, but it was sewn by Lois. Um, she had done a special order for me, and I sent her this fabric because I loved it so. It has trees and little critters, little moose and hedgehogs and foxes and deers and raccoons, and I just love it. So, love her bags. This is also a small. And I think that covers everything. That goes completely through May and June. So, you still have over a month to get your felted items in. So many awesome felted items. I totally need to go and get the face sewn on my little hoop bag. I didn't get to it this week because I've been super busy. And you'll see why I've been super busy. So, okay, so my shawl pattern is done. It's to the testers. The testers are booking right away on it. I think I might do a pre-order for that. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. But I'm waiting for the testers to be completely done. Just to make sure. And then, um, the first group of people that will have a chance to purchase the pattern will be at, or see the pattern and purchase it as well, is at the Zombie and Apocalypse Retreat. And then, so that would be the 22nd of June. So then the following Monday, which would be the 24th of June, it will go live to everybody on Ravelry to see. So... I'm really excited about that. I really, really love the pattern, and I hope um, other people do, too. So, I was kind of like, oh, the Shaw pattern took so much out of me. I mean, that really made me feel like an amateur. <laughs> I'm just like, I give people who, who excuse me, do um, really big patterns all the time a lot of credit, because it is a lot of work. So, I had to get back to the toys. So yesterday, I released my newest toy pattern. And, oh, it's a bunny! I love the bunny. So this is Mario the Artistic Rabbit. It's a rabbit, not a bunny, I guess. But I, I had originally intended to call it a bunny. Look at his little tail. Ah, little pom-pom tail. And I'm not the best pom-pom maker. I will admit that. No problem. I mean, I'm not the best pom-pom maker. But I try. There's a little face. <laughs> Love him. So, um, this pattern, uh, if you're a long-time viewer, or kind of a long-time viewer, long time since the fall, um, we had a bunny. It was my daughter's bunny. And the bunny passed away. Suddenly. And uh, so my daughter's kind of been getting on me about making a bunny pattern in memory of her bunny. So her bunny's name was Mario, and my daughter um, loves art. She's very artsy. So I thought it would only be fitting that it be an artistic bunny. And then, so the first few samples, or the first sample was this one. He's kind of chubbier because of the yarn. This is uh, made out of Lorna's laces in the... Catapola, I think it's C or C A L A T P A. I don't know. It's in my project page on Ravelry. It's also on the pattern itself. I always put what brand and color yarn it is. And I'm like, okay, this would work for a boy, right? You know, it's kind of. I don't know. At first, I'm thinking like he, he kind of reminds me of like a dust bunny, like. If a bunny was, like, left under your bed for a while, he might come out looking kind of like this. <laughs> but, um, then I got some Dancing Dog Dye Works in the jelly beans. And, you know, thinking Easter jelly beans. And I'm like, oh, I 
love the bright colors. I'm a huge fan of bright colors. And I'm like, oh, but the, the bunny is supposed to be a boy. But I'm like, you know what? He's an artistic bunny and watch him rock rainbow yarn with pink in it. Because that's what Jelly Beans is. It is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and pink. So it's a really fun colorway. Um, everything that you'd expect from Dancing Dog Dye Works in terms of bright colors. It is the Waltz Worsted Base. And uh, so I'm like, yeah, that's right. Boy Bunny rock that rainbow. <laughs> so, um, and then my daughter wanted one to look like her bunny. And her bunny was white with black appendages, but little, um, he had black around his eyes, which I didn't put anything around his eyes. The eyes are black as they are. But he had black around his eyes and then black feet and legs, black ears, and a black tail. And he had a couple spots, and she got on me because I did not add the spots on his back. He had, like, three little spots. So I might go back and kind of duplicate stitch those on. I don't know. But either way, I made a white bunny with black appendages. And if you knit tight, your fabric will be stiff. And then it'll give you really great shaped ears. Like, I use size 5s for all my samples. And this is Knit Pick Swish in black and white. And those special colorways there. And its ears have really great form. Now, I probably should have went down to a size 4. Because I used a 5 for all of them. So I should have used a 4 for the Dancing Dog with Dye Works. Because the fabric's not quite as stiff. And I can't quite get the shape. For the ears. I, for the pictures on the patterns, I really had to fiddle with them for a while. But they're so cute floppy and you can always add pipe cleaners or something to give them bendable shapes. But I love the bunny and he's so squishy. He's kind of gumdrop shaped. And I just wanted him to be fun and huggable. I always like my toys to be huggable. So. So that is a new pattern, and those are three <laughs> three finished objects, because I do prototypes, and I have prototypes that need frog, because sometimes I just don't like the way the yarn pulls, or sometimes I'm not real crazy about the shape, and it needs some, some uh, tweaking, and definitely the ears. I can't even begin to tell you how many different ears I went, and I decided I like the really big floppy ones, rather than skinny ears or really triangular ears or ears standing up. I like the floppy ears. I like, I like, I guess, toys with floppy arms and legs, and I like them to have some movement. I don't know, instead of being just rigid. Kind of like with Sam the Super Frog. Huge fan of him because of his floppy arms and legs. I like some movement. So, besides those finished objects, I finished my uh, giant squid alert socks. Let's see, it's the Afterthought Heel pattern by Laura Linneman because it's just a super easy pattern. Um, I don't quite follow the pattern to a T. I use size 2 needles when I knit socks and I use 60 stitches around and it's not hard to modify the pattern for that. And then I always add three extra rows before I start the heel decreases because the heel's just not quite deep enough for me. Otherwise, they came out great. So it is Dancing Dog Dye Works in the Twist Lux um, base. It is called Giant Squid Alert. And uh, of course, because I'm just that way, my stripes have got to match up absolutely perfect. And they do. Because <laughs> that's just the way I like it. Let's see. There you go. You can see the stripes all line up nice and neat. So yay, those are done. Those are samples for um, the Dancing Dog Dye Work table at the Zombie Knit Apocalypse Retreat. And then after that, I can wear them because the yarn, it's an MCN, which is Merino Cashmere Nylon, and it's so soft. Like, my feet are going to feel so pampered in these socks. So, that brings us to works in progress. Like dun 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 da It's adipose number four. So I'm excited. 
So if you've been watching for a while, like throughout this year, you know what adipose number four means. And I will talk more about that later on in the slice of life. So I don't bore anybody who doesn't want to hear about it. So I'm almost done. I'm almost done with the body. Um, I started it last night. So this is where I just knit straight for a while. And then I do the decreases for the top of the head. And then I just have arms and legs. So that should be done by next week. I just wanted to get it started because the pattern is not my favorite and I kind of just want it out of the way. I'm like, ah. Oh. And that's all my works in progress that I've worked on because everything else I've finished. And I haven't started anything new. I keep thinking, okay, I really should get out. Ooh, excuse me. I'll explain why I'm so tired later on as well. <laughs> Um, I should really get out some of my old works in progress because I have way too many things on the needles that have just kind of sat around. So I really should get all that stuff out and try to, like, okay, work on one new project, but work on an old project at the same time to kind of balance them out. Maybe. So, um, like I said, that's it for Works in Progress, and I have one yarny goodness to show you, but I already started using it, and it is the Dancing Dog Dye Works in the Jelly Beans colorway. Because it came in the mail while I was eating my lunch that day. The mail came a little early. Yay. And um, I took it right out of the envelope, wound it up, and started knitting on it. I couldn't wait. Because I love knitting with Dancing Dog Dye Works. It's so squishy. <laughs> so that's it. That's all my yarny goodness. And it was for pattern purposes. Because I've been good. Okay. I have a book review. And it came today. I was so excited. I was getting worried. Because uh, it was a pre-order. It is the Botanical Knits. It is by Alana Dacos of Never Not Knitting. And I, let's see, I am so, so, so sorry. I really have a really, really good excuse of why I'm exhausted. <laughs> um, I bought the pre-order for the hardcover book because you could buy the digital copy like months ago. I feel like I ordered this forever ago. I kind of forgot about it for a little while. But I saw people posting on Plurk and Instagram that theirs were coming, that they got theirs Monday. And then yesterday was Tuesday and a bunch of more people had gotten theirs. And I was kind of like freaking out. Like, oh my gosh, mine isn't, hasn't come yet. Did it get lost? I was kind of like... Because I really wanted the paperback copy. It was more expensive to get the paperback copy, the actual physical copy, but it did come with a free downloadable version as well for Ravelry, so you got a code, and you just went on to Ravelry, put the book in your cart, used the code, and it was essentially free because you bought the paperback book. So, which is great. I like having stuff in my Ravelry library, but I am not ready to go digital with my books yet, especially my knitting books. Especially when it's late at night, I don't want to be staring at a screen. And it frustrates me because sometimes your screen shut off or it dims and then I get, I don't like it. I'm just not there yet. So I like having an actual physical copy of the book. But the fact that I got the digital copy and the physical copy was like a win-win for me. It was worth the extra however much. I couldn't even tell you how much of a difference there was. Let's see, it does see if the price is on here. Because I cannot tell you what I paid for it. There is no price. Um, I don't know why. I was thinking it was like around $22. I don't, and I don't know if that's with or without shipping. I don't remember. But either way, it's, it was worth it to me. It is a beautiful book. It, Twelve designs inspired by trees and foliage. Um, when you open it up, the first thing I noticed, I was like, ooh, it almost fell out, is there are 
these stickers. And what does it say? It says, thank you so much for purchasing botanical knits. I hope you enjoy knitting from this special collection. Keep track of your favorite designs with these complimentary sticky page markers. So it says, find, uh, find more beautiful knitting patterns at nevernotknitting.com. Buy one PDF download, get the second free, and there is a coupon code. So I'm going to cover up the coupon code because you had to buy the book to get the coupon code. But it's cute. It has all these little leaves, and I guess they're sticky. Yes. They're lightly sticky, so I don't think they'll ruin the pages. But, like, one leaf says, cast on now. One says, must knit. Want knit love. Great gift idea. Will knit one day. Buy yarn for. My style. Favorite design. So you can go through and kind of mark the pages with, um... You know, these cute little stickers. So, I thought, well, that was cute. You know. Added fun extras are always nice. But the book is beautiful. I mean, the photography in the book is beautiful. Just the opening, like, the dedication page. It has, I think those are cranberry-type looking things. I'm like, cranberries come from bogs. But they grow on something. Right? I don't know, but the photography, like I said, we don't have cranberries around here. It's beautiful. Um, I love the table of contents, and I know this has been reviewed by some people. They do the digital one, but I really wanted to wait for the book. I do like the table of contents and how there are pictures of the actual projects. And then it gives the page number. And really, I think all these designs are really beautiful. There is a beginning, a before you begin talks about gauge swatches, getting the right size needle. Um, I mean, really, if you're going to... I have not always been the best at gauge swatching. Don't let me fool you. But, <laughs> as I have gotten to be a better knitter and my patience with knitting has grown, I have learned it is kind of important to do a gauge swatch. Especially if you went and invested in the patterns. So you bought this book for... Like I said, around $20, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. <laughs> um, you bought the yarn, which depending on what type of yarn you bought. Um, I have already bought the yarn for one of the patterns in here. It gets expensive. So take the time and just make this stupid gauge swatch. So it's broken down by sections. It says sweaters. And I'm telling you, I love the photography. Because I love leaves and outdoorsy looking things although I'm not an outdoorsy kind of gal but I sure like to look at it <laughs> so there's um autumn's end which of course is absolutely beautiful it is like a lace pattern but it looks like it's a simple leaf pattern that wouldn't be hard to memorize gorgeous love that that is definitely on my to knit list although I'm not a huge fan of pullovers only because I seem to get like hot and then cold and then hot and then cold so I'm a huge fan of cardigans um I don't want to show you everything in the book I mean there is only 12 patterns but I only want to touch on my favorites um the twigs and willows which is absolutely lovely I love the color that this sample was done in it has this beautiful lace detail that comes right up your collarbone And there's really great schematics. The charts are nice and big, which I really appreciate. Um, my personal all-time favorite pattern out of this book is the Entangled Vines cardigan. It is the one that I've bought in the pad. Uh, the yarn for... I don't have the yarn in here at all. Um, it is a brown. I got it. It's Broco Vintage. I think it was called Chocolate. It has a number as well. But I got it from Jimmy Beans a little while back. And I don't know if there's... I wish there was a picture that didn't show pattern. Okay, well here's... It has a, um, a pattern that goes down the side of the arm. So it's just a simple... Like in the front, it looks like a simple cardi. I really like the buttons on it. 
And then you can see here, it's just schematics. I don't really think it's giving much away, but let's try not to. I'll talk more about this later. <laughs> um, you can kind of see here, and then definitely the picture down here, the detail on the sleeve. So, totally, totally love that cardigan. I want to cast that on really, really soon. It might be, it might be what I cast on next. It just may be. Um, I do like the Ivy Trellis socks, although I just worry that I might not find them comfortable. Because I really don't like lumpy, bumpy socks, but I really love the color. I love the pattern. I think they're really super cute socks. And there was, I know there was definitely one more I wanted to show. Oh, uh, there's the Ivy Trellis Mittens. I love this yarn. It's the same pattern that's on the socks. Love the color of this. It's kind of that burnt orange color. I love the pressed sleeves hat. I mean, I think all the colors in this book were done so well. All the yarn looks so nice with all the the patterns. And then another one I really love that I really, really want to make is the Spring Foliage Fingerless Mitts. Love the color. Seriously, it has the leaves that go down to the thumbs. So it goes, you know, the pattern's all down here. Super, super cute. And then another thing that I really love about the book is it shows um, all the different yarns used. They knit up little leaves. Um, it tells you the yarn maker, um, the line of yarn, and the color, and then what page it can be found on. So that's really nice. And it's a lot of it is stuff like Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, um, Quince and Company Offspree, Broco Ultra Light or Ultra Alpaca Light. I mean, this is stuff that you can find. Madeline Tosh, Tosh Merino DK. Um, I think the only real smaller dye. Uh, dyer is the Miss Babs. She did use a couple Miss Babs. So, like I said, absolutely uh, wonderful, worth every penny. I plan to knit so many things out of it. And then, if you bought the actual physical copy of the book, you got a bonus pattern. And it is the Ivy Trellis hat. So it is just a paper insert, and this matches the socks that I showed you, as well as the mittens. So you can have a hat, mittens, and socks that all match. Let's see. There's more pictures. And then I'm really excited because I happen to be flipping through, looking it over, and I saw on the back, it says, If you enjoy this pattern, you will also enjoy designs in my latest book, Botanical Knits. Keep your eye out for Botanical Knits 2 in 2014. So that's exciting to know that there will be like a sequel to this series and I will definitely pre-order it again if there is a deal like this for sure. Love it, love it, love it. Worth every penny. Whew. Okay, so I didn't really get any spinning done this week. Still working on the loop strawberry patch. Still just finishing up the green. So I didn't even bother bringing the bump over because it, it's, yeah. The bunnies, the bunnies kept me busy. So that's it for the knitting. That's all I have to share. So if you're leaving me now, I will see you next week. And if you're sticking around for a slice of life, well, let's get to it. <laughs> so, as I showed you, I am starting my fourth adipose, so I'm so excited. After two very small weight loss weeks, I think 0.7 and then a 0.4, and then last week I maintained, I dropped 3.1. <laughs> 
So really excited about that because I was starting to get concerned that I might be plateauing. And I just have busted my butt. I have seriously worked out every day for like a minimum of an hour and up to two hours. So I usually try to do an exercise video of some kind. I've been doing the Jillian Michaels um, beginner series. So I do that twice a week. I do the front side and the back side spread out through the week. And then I do other stuff. So I've been doing my sweat into the oldies. I love sweat into the oldies too. That's the one I've been doing the most. I like it because it does like ab workouts. And that's an area I need to focus on. And then um, I've also started working back in the Weight Watchers Punch um, DVD. And I had to start back at the beginning. With the beginner level. Because my whole shin splint thing, I swear, it made me lazy and... I didn't quite have the oomph for the video that I used to. So that was exciting because now I am at lost poundage of 40.8. So very exciting. And then the other thing going on this week is it's been kind of stressful and crazy is my daughter went on a class trip to Washington DC. So there's nothing worse than having to get up <laughs> at 5 in the morning on a weekend so she can get on the bus to go. So I didn't sleep very well over the weekend. And then I didn't sleep very well at the beginning of the week because, well, I'm a nervous wreck. My baby is hundreds of miles away and I'm not with her. <laughs> so she got home really late last night. So, you know, of course she got home really late. So I'm fighting to stay awake. You know, I'm on a VKN and I'm like, oh, so tired. Because it was just so hot and uncomfortable yesterday. And that just sucks the energy right out of you. So, but then I'm nervous. Because then the, I get a call that there was some sort of repair that had to be made to the bus. They were running late. And that kind of had me frazzled. And so I was so relieved when she walked in the door. So when she walked in the door, she had to show us all the stuff she bought with her spending money. And pictures and tell us all about it so we were up really really late last night Ugh. and then I just I didn't sleep well I don't know why I think it was just too hot the house just feels so stuffy even though it's not so I wanted to show you what she brought back because I you know she's like well what do you want me to bring you back and I'm like you don't have to spend your money on me it's your class trip go have a good time but she wanted to get me something and it came from the Smithsonian Museum in the gems section where they have all the jewelry and gemstones and, um, oh crap, what are they called? I know what they're called and it's not coming to me. You know, the rocks, you know, they usually have cut in half and you can see all the amethyst and blah, blah, blah on it. Someone's yelling it at me, I'm sure. Anyways, because <laughs> they're not just rocks, they're geodes, is that right? Geodes. Anyways, so she saw this and she thought of me because it was orange. So, it's really pretty. So it is orange calcite, and it is from Chihuahua, Mexico, which she thought was cute, Chihuahua, Mexico. Um, so she said she picked up the biggest chunk they had, so that's fun. It, to me, it looks like a piece of like frozen orange juice. It looks like it could be like a frozen like orange juice um, ice cube or something. It's so pretty, and it's so shiny, and I love it, and I'm going to show it again. Because I'm like, oh, my baby thought of me. And she went and took a picture of the, you know, ruby slippers from The Wizard of Oz. So that was exciting, too. She texted me that. I might put some pictures at the end from her trip. So I thought that might be fun. Because I'm like, how exciting. So she got to go, and they got to do the White House, and you know, the Lincoln Memorial, and unfortunately, uh, the Washington Monument had damage from an earthquake a couple years ago, so they didn't get to go up in that, which is kind of a shame, because the one time I got to go to D.C., we went up to the top and got to look out, and the view is just spectacular. But they pretty much got to do it all. Um, there isn't... The only thing that I can remember doing, um on a class trip, and I mean, it's totally different right now than it was then. Um, we got to go to the U.S. Mint, which was really cool, because you could buy, like, sheets of, like, uncut dollar bills and 
all that stuff. And they didn't get to go to the Mint. But there's new things like there's now the Pentagon Memorial. They went and saw that. There's now the Martin Luther King Jr. Um, I guess it's a memorial. I don't know what its official title is off the top of my head. It's probably a memorial, right? So she got pictures of that, which was really cool because that wasn't obviously there when I was there as a kid. So it's really cool. I was really excited for her. She had such a great time. But I swear, she came home and crashed so hard. She was so tired. So, um, you know, it's just stressful when your kids are gone and it's all... And like I said, then it was so funny because I got a call about uh, the bus needing repairs. And I didn't know which bus it was because they took more than one. And uh, the message was just like there's a delay because the bus needed repairs and they're like but it wasn't an accident so I wasn't I didn't know what the repairs were I just know that there were repairs and I guess a window had broken I guess the bus driver didn't take a wide enough turn somewhere and it something hit the window and it broke but she said it didn't break out they the, they had to put like duct tape over the pieces I don't know but she made it back safely and that's what matters <laughs> so Oh, I so need a nap. I am so exhausted because it was like probably close to 2 o'clock in the morning by the time I got to bed and then I was up early. And I'm like, oh, so. So hopefully I will have some new stuff to show you next week since I finished the Shaw of Doom last week and I now finished my lovely socks and I have a new pattern out which I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody who goes and favorites my patterns and I'm sure every designer feels that way because when you go and you favorite a designer's pattern it helps bump them up in the patterns like there's like the hot right now list and it keeps the patterns up so more and more people see it which gets more exposure as a designer which is really awesome so huge thank you to everybody out there who's bought it who's favorited it and I cannot wait to see some bunnies knitted up at some point. So that's it for me this week. I am Jenna. I am Retro Lemon on Ravelry, Plurk, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, um, Weight Watchers, and Fitbit. So, whew, I feel like I'm all over the place. <laughs> so until next week, I'll see you then. Bye.